So many times I talk to survivors of narcissistic abuse and I ask the question, how much did you change in the relationship? And they normally list off a million different things. I talked to a client and she was like, I changed so much. And I'm like, how much did he change for you? As a narcissist, I had two masks. I had two faces. I had two versions of me. I had the version that everybody would see and that what everybody would think was a good person that would look good and would be the best in certain areas. And then the person that my wife would see, the person who didn't care, the person who didn't show up loving, invested or anything like that, but was disconnected because I was focused on someone else. And there's multiple little side faces, side masks that I would have with different supplies, with different affairs that I was in. There's always this duality in being a narcissist that's hard to be able to work through, that's hard to be able to figure out. And a narcissist a lot of times will focus on only showing one version to you and a completely different version to the rest of the world. So I want to talk today about the aspect of having two masks, two faces, a duality of who the narcissist actually is. If you guys are new here, I'm a narcissist. I'm on this channel to help bring awareness to people so they understand what narcissism actually is, what it looks like, and how it just integrates into life and it confuses. If you're new here, please hit subscribe, hit that notification so you can get, get notified when we drop new videos. Uh, we drop new videos daily or when we do live Q&As. When we're talking about this aspect of two faces of a narcissist, what you see at home and what you see at public. Maybe you've gone to couples counseling. And you've walked into couples counseling and you've sat there and you've looked over and he's sitting there and you're just like, who is this person? Because all of a sudden there's this, like this, uh, uh, these different like talks and thoughts and ideas coming out from this other person being like, I just want our marriage. I love like all this kind of stuff. And you're like, you don't even act that way. You don't even invest. You don't even care. Maybe you've gone to different family functions and where the family sees how amazing that person is. But you're like, I don't see it. Maybe in like a work function. You're like, how is this person acting this way? Why is this person acting this way when they're so different at home? Well, when we talk about the two faces of narcissists, I want to talk about the public face and the private face. The public face is where they're good at a lot of things. This might be where you're engaged, where you're married, where you're in a relationship with another person and they're great at business. And they say a lot of times the guy is great at business, a great manipulator, a great salesman, uh, great at just making more money, a great at accel accelerating the business, anything like that because of those, some of those narcissistic traits. And so the piece of, hey, this works really great in the business, even though they run over other people, hurt other people and don't really care, it looks great there because of what they're actually producing, what they're actually showing, the results that are there, but the results aren't there when it comes to the relationship. Oftentimes, a man will invest so much time into business and so much time into focusing on that, they'll for neglect their aspect of relationships, their aspect of actually true connection to another person because it's not something that they can see results because they have to be vulnerable and they have to be honest. They actually have to open up versus just coming home, vegging out and checking in. So when we talk about this aspect of like the public face, a lot of times you'll see this aspect of being great in public, business, family, friends, church, all those different aspects of looking great in those, but then being really awful at home. This is the, oftentimes the person that we'll see that's like, looks like a really great dad on Instagram because even though he's divorced or even though he's disconnected with the rest of his family, he still does stuff with the kids all the time because there's pictures on Instagram. There's pictures on social media of like what he's doing with the kids and like just that investment. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Like you're such a good co-parent. But what they don't realize is those pictures are typically taken within an hour to two hours that he spends with his kids maybe once every other week. There's not really an investment there. It's just an image. It's just an idea of let me put this out there to look a certain way. And then sometimes you'll see this aspect of a narcissist being best at their job, best for awards, like acclaimed as a family man or this great person, but they're not. And it disgusts you because that isn't who he is at home. That isn't the person that you fell in love with. That isn't the person that you thought was there for you, that you thought you were going to build a family together. But everybody else thinks it is, leaving you trapped with this incongruence of like, I don't actually know what to believe. 
I don't know what to do. I don't know if I can actually say this person is abusive because of the ramifications, because everybody will judge me and look down on me because I'm bringing something up on someone who is so spotless in the community. And that's the public face. The version that the narcissist wants the public to see, but not the version that's actually real. The closer we are to reality is this aspect of the private face. It's different at home and it's different to you. And it makes you feel crazy. It makes you feel like, am I actually insane? Because like he just talked to me this way, but like he didn't do that to his coworker. He didn't do that to his boss. He didn't do that to his family. Like what's going on? And you start to realize that nothing you do is good enough for that person. So many times I talk to survivors of narcissistic abuse and I ask the question, how much did you change in the relationship? And they normally list off a million different things. They changed their job. They changed what they wore. They changed what they ate. They changed like every single aspect of communication to that other person, modifying and molding themselves to be the person that that person wanted them to be. And I talked to a client and she was like, I changed so much. And I'm like, how much did he change for you? And oftentimes I just get like a blank stare back or a thoughtful idea of like, I don't know. Because typically it doesn't happen. But you'll feel like it's all your fault. You'll feel like it's all you. And that's because over a period of time, the narcissist started to belittle you. Started to make you feel unsafe. Started to set, tell you that he doesn't trust you anymore. Started to make you feel scared. Started to make you have fear and anxiety. Started to like place different things on you to make you think, wait a second, what's going on? Maybe along the lines of like asking like, why don't you trust me? Like, what did I do? And then you start doubting yourself of like, what did I do? And it flips back and forth. You have this aspect of the two faces of a narcissist where a narcissist will be saying how they're such a family man and then they're the ones that are cheating on you. And you try to confront it. You try to bring it up. There's this gut feeling and they're like, what are you talking about? Like, why would I ever do that to you? Don't you see X, Y, Z? Don't you see all that I've done for you? Don't you see all the things I provide? Don't you see the house that I give to you? Don't you see the bills that I pay? All these different things the nurses will try to do to distract from the actual situation. And it makes you feel like you're crazy. And you start to fall off the pedestal that the narcissist grabs out from underneath you and says, you're no longer perfect. I no longer care about you. I no longer want to keep this facade up. I'm going to take down my mask, the public face that you saw that you fell in love with, and I'm going to deal with my private face. And then you're locked in. You're stuck. You're at the place where you can't complain about it. You can't bring anything up. Why? Because society, and he says to you that because he provides, you owe him something. Because he provides, you owe him sex. Because he provides, you should have dinner on the table. Because he provides all this stuff, but he's not providing. All he's doing is providing a paycheck. He's not providing safety, emotional support, security, love, respect, care, loyalty. And these are not things that are just transactional. If you provide this amount of respect, then you get a f like food on the table. Like we're not talking about that. We're just talking about like a cohesive relationship that is not happening when you're with a narcissist. You can't be upset. You can't be sad because he came home. Like what are you complaining about? I had a client, narcissistic client that was was frustrated in a certain situation because of a gift that he gave that she didn't want to receive, that she was frustrated about. And in that moment, he was giving a gift that she didn't want. She didn't think they had enough money. She didn't, she, it, wasn't, it wasn't her style. It wasn't what she wanted. And he was frustrated of like why she didn't receive that. And when it came down to it, part of the aspect was that he wanted to give her the gift because it made him feel better about himself. Like he wanted her to experience whatever gift it was so that he felt better about himself, not realizing that that was actually hurting the relationship because she just wanted him. She just wanted connection. She just wanted love. She didn't want this gift that didn't mean anything to her. 
but the gift was extravagant, so then how could you complain? The gift was big, so then why would it be even nice for her to say anything bad about it? Like, that would seem very ungrateful, right? And that's the game sometimes that gets played. And it makes you feel crazy, it makes you feel confused, and you're not sure where to turn. If you're looking for some direction, if you're looking for some clarity to like start you off, I would say check out escapetoxicity.com to start getting free of the mindset that's limited you for a lot of time. Because it, it produces this crazy making idea and this crazy making effect of like, I don't know what to believe. Because people only see one version of the narcissist that you're with. They just see the public image, the public version. They see the charm and the charisma versus the intense emotions and walking on eggshells at home. They see the superiority and sometimes the entitlement because they're so good at business or they're so good at one aspect versus the insecurity and the manipulation that they bring to the table at home that controls you. They see even manipulation in like a positive light of like, wow, that person's such a good salesman. Like they're really good, like getting to what they want versus seeing the aggressive behaviors at home of when they're screaming and yelling and fighting with you. And you're left confused, afraid, anxious, emotionally exhausted. You have to be able to step into a new space and understand that it is possible to find yourself and understand what actually happened. We're trying to help people get free every single day. Check out escapetoxicity.com or if you want to figure out where you are in your stage of healing first, you can click the link down below to book a discovery call. We'd love to be able to help you move forward in your healing, getting away from a toxic person and staying away from that toxic person in the future. 